So it doesn't look like this session has started too well because the gist of this phone call, I think we have forgotten a bait. Am I right? Did you hear that? <laughs> Am I right? I forgot the bait. And Lou just, um, she's going to send me a photo confirm because it's a bit random here, so I can't confirm if it's what I need. But I think I've left all of my fishing bait at home. We could and go back. I'm not going back. We are like 15 minutes from the venue. There's no chance. The worst thing is that I've done all this prep. Yeah, I have as well. It's literally sitting there look, staring at me. The worst thing is, there's a moral to this story, right? I don't normally do much prep, but I soak loads of boilies out, put them in liquid, wash them out. They were going to be mega. So there's a moral here is, um, yeah, just don't do any prep. It's not worth it. What are we going to do? Uh, um, I don't really know too much around this, so I don't know. I'm going to come up with something. I'll look at my phone. I'll see what's around. It's going to be something we can get. And um, plan B has come out before plan A even started, but I don't know. Not a good start, is it? So we've just pulled into the car park and we're at East Delft Lakes, which is the venue for the next 24 hours, hopefully catching a few carp. And it has not been a good start. How you can get your fishing bait, I do not know, but that's just me to a T, I think. So I had a look around and to be honest, I just refused to buy loads of more expensive bait. I'd already prepped it. So the plan B came into action and we went to stop at a Tesco's and I think we all know you could say so many baits from a supermarket and you'd be happy, but there is one that trumps everything. And that is the classic golden grain. Sweet corn has probably caught more carp than anything across the country. So although it wasn't my original plan, I'm still pretty happy and we've got a good chance. So three or four bags of this are coming with me. I'm gonna be fairly mobile to start with, see if we can find a few fish and then we'll perhaps set up base camp once we're happy with the area for the evening. So yeah, like I said, not ideal start, but I've not given up by any means. So I'm gonna get the gear unloaded. We're gonna get round there and see if we can find a few fish. Right, so we've had a quick walk around and the only place I've seen fish is tucked away in this little corner. So it's probably the good a place to start as any. I've seen one cruising and a few little pinprick bubbles, but nothing anywhere else. So as I said, I'm gonna stay really mobile to start with. I'm gonna fish off the barrow. The only thing that'll come off is my alarms and my rods. And we'll just keep an eye on the water, see if we can find anything. And then once I feel I'm at my happiest that we've got the best chance for the evening, that's when we'll set up camp and see what happens. Luckily, there's only one other person on today, so we can stay a bit mobile. We can try and find them, but this looks like probably as good a place to start as any. Well, the softly, softly approach has worked wonders. We've been fishing for about half an hour and the right hand rod that we literally just flicked over the far side actually went round there, clipped the rig on and a couple of handfuls of bait over it has gone and I'm attached to my first ever East Delft carp. I've never fished here before. And yeah, whenever you get a, a bite at a new venue, it's always like the, the legs go and you feel just an extra bit of 
nervousness when you're playing your first one, but... Single grain of corn still hanging out of his mouth. go and look at that a proper hook hold with just a, a hint of a corn skin left on there that's all but that's a start so they're certainly not troubling any records but for fishing I'm gonna guess about an hour you cannot go wrong with that I'm gonna say he's probably I don't know mid to upper doubles and certainly go a lot bigger than this lake and actually a lot of the pictures I see on social are all these scaly bangers so i'm not too sure how many commons there actually are in there but certainly welcome on our day and my first ever fish from east elf lake so my virginia has been taken at the venue and like i said it didn't take very long at all so we're going to get this one slipped back and get that rod back in position and see if there's another one just around the corner There, mate. Nice. <laughs> Who needs, Who needs bait? Well, a celebratory brew is in order, always good to get off the mark and even sweeter on a new venue. But what I'm gonna do is I'll quickly talk you through how we got that rod out and the reasons for why I've done it. So the bike came on the right hand rod, which is in this nice quiet little corner down here. Now, obviously I could have just cast a rig there. It's not very far. It wouldn't be too hard, but on highly pressured waters like this, I think noise dispersion to a minimal is a massive thing. So what i actually done is I cast the lead on the bank over the spot and then I've walked around there, clipped the rig on then with a landing net handle I've just lowered it off the side, a few handfuls of corn over it and that's what done the business. So keep things as quiet as you possibly can is a massive difference on little lakes like this that see a lot of anglers. And while we're on that point, what I'm going to do now is sort of sit back with this cuppa and just watch the water because although I said we're quite lucky here we've only got one anger on the far side sometimes it can actually work against you because there's no one else making noise pushing fish back into you being nice and stealthy so even though we've been as quiet as we possibly can the disturbance of a fish capture could easily push those fish out to where there's no other anglers so it's a case now of I'm going to sit back for a few minutes watch the water I have seen a couple top an island over the other side so I'm going to keep an eye on that and it may be the fact that I might rock up somewhere else for even somewhere I feel I can get a bit of a bait going in get a spot going for the hours of darkness but the sessions start here about one o'clock so I've had that one fairly quick so I've got a few hours before we have to make that decision yet I'm just going to sit back leave these rods nice and quiet keep my eyes out and if we need to move or act on any fish displayed, then we will 100% do that later on. Well, I am glad that I chose to stay put for a moment, almost watching the right hand rod expecting that could be the one to go and two in a row pop their heads up over the left hand rod and it, sometimes in carp fishing you just know they're going to go and I said to Chris there is no way that rod is not going, it just looks so good and then 20 minutes later probably half an hour after finishing that brew it is absolutely melted off and we attach to another carp. He's trying to beast me down this side here, but if I concentrate on getting him in, that could be two fish before the evening draws in. So let's hope this one plays ball. Boy, really getting down that side. They know where all the snags are. 
absolutely beasting me, the lead's come off. So he's right up in the water going mental. for the corn. Yes. He wasn't coming off, that's for sure. No wonder they fight so hard. Look at that for a rudder. Now that is certainly what East Elf is known for. Really pretty fish, lovely scale patterns. Maybe a touch bigger. I don't think he's going to make the 20 pound. I'm not going to weigh him, but you know, he's getting towards high doubles, maybe scraper 20s. But sounds funny here. This we don't do too much cut fishing. The fish that I said I see come over the spot had a massive tail. And you know, if I was going to say, is it this fish? I genuinely would. I think it's shown over the spot, couldn't resist whipping his head down and having a little feed. On those grains of corn so mega mega happy with that i'm still not 100 percent convinced if i'm going to stay here two fish is kind of leaning me towards possibly but uh, i'm not a million percent sure yet so what i'll do is we'll get this one slip back and then we'll talk to you through the rigs that we've used to catch the two so far and then we'll make that decision what's going to happen for the evening Okay, as you can probably see, I have decided to stay here after putting that fish back. The rods are back on the spot and we've got the bivy up as well. Just because something sticks to me forever when I was told I was really young when I started fishing. Someone said to me, never move off feeding fish and that saying has really stuck with me. So we've caught fish on both rods, two spots potentially that could do another bite and I have seen fish in the area. So although I've seen a few elsewhere, I'm just a bit reluctant at the moment to see or move until we see something really happen. So this is gonna be perhaps my location for the evening. And what I'm doing is just getting prepared for that. So I'm just tying a couple of rigs up. So it's a great opportunity to show you exactly what we're using. Now we got dealt the hand of fishing corn after forgetting my bait. And I like to keep things really simple. Now we're not allowed foam or we're not allowed plastic baits in here. So that made it even more simple. And I've just gone with a short braided hair rig, which is Cortex Tungsten, and I've knotless knotted a size five curved shank, and on there, I'm hair rigging with a little bait stop, three grains of corn. Now to finish that, a little blob of putty in the middle to keep it all down, and a tungsten sinker on the end. So it literally probably is as simple as they come, but hey, two fish have slipped up already, and what's to say another one won't slip up before the evening's in. So. I think it won't be too long before we order some food. I might move the right hand rod away from the bank in the evening, just because I think there might be a morning bite area and I might put a bit of bait out in the middle. But we've got a few hours before we have to make that decision. So I'm gonna get rigs tied up, watch the water, put the kettle on, and we'll see as the evening unfolds what happens. So we've had the cup of tea and sat and watched the water and not seen an awful lot, if I'm honest. So I'm just gonna whip this right hand rod in just because my hunch is saying that over there on the right hand side is quite shallow and it might be a bit of a morning area. It's getting really cold. I can feel the temperature dropping now and like every night this week has been frost and something just tells me they might not be there when it's really cold. And I'll get up at first light if nothing else has happened and put it straight back on there because I do like the spot. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the spawn rod up 
and probably put, I don't know, five or six bombs of corn out just towards where I've seen a few fish show in the middle of the lake. It's a lot deeper, create my own sort of feet. There's not really anything out there. It's all the same pretty much. So the feature is going to be my bait. I'm going to get that prepared, get them out there and just get that rod out while we've got a little bit of light left for the evening. I don't want to get a bite. <laughs> Give me 10 minutes, I'll take one. <laughs> but these chips are good. Much better than, um, well, probably much better than me sampling like one of your stair fries or something. <laughs> I, don't, just, I don't know if they're this good because I've been eating healthy <laughs> or they're just are this good. But and no, what? We can have a stir fry next time. <laughs> I have gone for one they call the beef eater. Check that out. <laughs> I'm starving. Well, good morning. A pretty uneventful evening. The temperatures absolutely plummeted as they do this time of year. I think the fish really struggle to know what's going on. Daytimes are lovely, mid-teen temperatures, sunshine, and it gets them active, only for those temperatures to plummet to, it didn't freeze last night, but pretty much freeze, and it has done the same, like last week it's been those temperatures. So they completely switched off, stopped showing. I've been up since first light and seen absolutely nothing. I have refreshed the rods. The island rod's just been flicked back out with a little bag of corn and then the right hand rod has been moved back down to the corner because I think there's a chance of a morning bite but like as I said literally nothing to go on since first light so the next group comes on here at sort of midday so we've got a race to the finish line to see if we can find one I think what I'll do is I'll give it an hour or two here regardless if not I'll move somewhere where I think there could be a fish even if I don't see one just to try and spark things off but certainly I'm going to keep my eyes really focused on the water and if I see one I'm going to be packing down and I'm going to get straight on that and try and nick one before we have to shoot off. Well, the right hand rod to the rescue. It's probably been out there, I don't know, an hour this morning, no, probably two hours. Time flies when you're sort of wishing a bite on. And I said I thought it would do a morning bite. Now, obviously, I, hindsight's a wonderful thing. I am wondering if I should have left it out there last night, would it have done another bite? But you don't know that. I do think it's fairly shallow water and you know, the temperature's probably risen eight or nine degrees since last night already. So it doesn't surprise me. That's the first bit of water to warm up and we're into a fish. So I'm gonna concentrate on getting this one in because he's trying to bully me right under this rock tip. The hat trick on the court. Well, check that out. The single grain of corn left on there. A really light hook hold in the middle, middle of the bottom lip, but how good a condition, a pristine condition fish. Exactly what you want to see and definitely the biggest one of the trip. 
What a wicked looking carp. And to be in such good condition, it's got a credit to the fishery, really, really good and well worth that cold night. It did get really cold in there in the bag, but putting the rod out again this morning, confidence were higher as the light came up and the temperatures slowly start to increase. I'm not gonna weigh him. I mean, he's, he's getting towards that magical 20 mark, but he's not gonna quite make it, I don't think. But for me, it's kind of irrelevant what they weigh when they look as good as that and they're in prime shape. So yeah, after a pretty, disastrous start yesterday morning I'll put it it's turned out to be eventful enjoyable and actually there's probably a blessing in disguise because I don't think there's a carp in the country that doesn't eat a grain of sweet corn and uh, yeah this uh, session has certainly proved so it didn't take no encouragement so we just flicked the lead back over the far side clipped on my rig now really, I should have a bait and pole, the bait and spin, but I didn't bring one with me, didn't expect to be doing it. So there's always improvisations to be had. Hook it over the end of the land net handle. Now I can just ship this out right down the edge here. Now I'm gonna drop it just off the edge. Just a few flicked out grains of corn and another trap is set. Well, that is ridiculous. I was literally lowered the rig in, put a few pinches of corn in, and I've heard the alarm going. Run, we're literally talking like two foot away from where I've got the bite. I mean, it's the importance of lowering a rig in quietly, but I thought with me being over there, doing a little bit of talking to camera, I know I was relatively quiet, but didn't expect the bite to be quite that quick. So I've run back round here, and we've got another one absolutely beasting us, as they all have. What about that for a run? not coming off. What a mega looking fish. Look at that for a tail. Not very often you'll see a carp that looks like that. Well sometimes you don't need to say too much just look at the beauty of that fish. It's got so many different features, characteristics, colours, white fins and its tail and what just a mega, mega car. It'll be hard pushed to catch something that looks as good as that for an awful long while. I did pop him on the scales, 23 pounds. We have had one confirmed over the 20 pound mark, but I wouldn't mind if this was eight pound looking like that. It is insane. Well, I don't think it's going to get much better than that. The right hand rod is back on the spot. That one's nice and easy. I've talked you through how we're putting that one out there. But time is ticking away. The sun has burnt off a lot of the morning clouds. It's heating up nicely. And we've got perhaps, I don't know, a couple of hours left. So I'm just going to refresh the left hand rod just for one last time and talk you through just a little thing about what we're doing now. Obviously I want to get some sort of attraction around my hook bait. So I'm just making here a little PVA bag of corn. You've probably just seen me there. I've been drying the corn on my leg. Now obviously if you were prepared to fish corn today, you would have probably brought a little towel to dry it off with you. That's a good way to do it. Or there's a couple of other ways really. So you could get a, a real oil based or a PVA friendly liquid. 
and mix that in with it. Or finally, salt is really good as well. So salt stops stuff that should melt PVA. So corn obviously is water-based. So you put some salt with it and then put that in a PVA bag and it would stop it from dissolving until you cast into lake, monster lake water mixed with it, then obviously it would melt as normal. So this is the island rod. It's a real small little bag. I know this is still gonna melt fairly quick, so I'm gonna try and get it out there in a little bit of haste, but that's the, the same rig. A tiny little one mouthful bag of corn goes out there, as tight as I can physically get it. That one down the right hand side is really tight that we're polling in. So this one is as tight as I can cast it to that island and hopefully there might be one more bite in it yet. But what I'm going to do is a slow pack away I think when this rod is out and then we'll see what the last little bit of the session brings. Well, there we go. My first ever session at East Elf Lakes completed. Four mega fish topped off with that really special one at the end. And if it's taught me anything, it's to take sweet corn with me, regardless of where I'm going, what I'm fishing for, it just works every single time. So it's been an absolute dream to fish. Big thanks to James for letting us down here. I'll definitely be coming back. So. I'm gonna say, obviously, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. But just before I sign off, something a little different that we'll leave you with. So for those of you who are carp followers into your carp fishing, you probably would have heard of a chap called Dusto who does sort of spray paint artwork, graffiti, whatever you wanna call with it, to a ridiculously good standard. He's done some of the really sort of famous walls in the tackle industry in the past. And he is in the car park spraying one of James's caravans. So I'm gonna go and sit and watch him for half an hour and we'll leave you with the footage of his mega artwork underway. But we will see you again on the next one. And thanks for watching.